Thank you. So hello everybody. Welcome to another Code Week session. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, an information security matter, uh, security devils. Uh, first of all, a few things about me. I have studied uh, computer engineering, basically, uh, Bachelor of Engineering and Master of Science. Uh, my background is about 17 years generally in uh, IT and tech. I have worked in fintech, crypto, and e learning industries. The last six years, uh, I'm into cybersecurity and information security, and uh, I have another two, three years uh, managing cybersecurity, DevOps, and compliance teams. Currently, I'm uh, on a freelancing stage of my career. And uh, as I told you before, today we'll talk about security devils. Security devils is a term that is uh, widely used, a standard that's widely used uh, the last few years. Um, it usually, it's a part of a broader information security program, but it can also be uh, fired up and adopted uh, by tech teams. Um, it will be interesting to you and useful either if you are a technical manager, technical executive, and you want to invest to uh, this uh, topic that we'll talk about, the security DevOps, or you may be just an individual contributor or a team leader and you want to adopt uh, a better technique to approach security, let's say. So security DevOps is basically a combination between cybersecurity, the technical part of security, and DevOps. It's a way of using DevOps techniques and philosophy, I would dare to say, uh, to attain better security results. Basically, it's like injecting security inside to DevOps practices and techniques. Uh, to make things more clear, let's start why we need security DevOps, which need created security DevOps. Okay, um, if we have uh, some people in my age, you remember the past, the good old monolithic and horizontal scale infrastructures and applications. Like uh, we had infrastructures of three or four servers um, uh, with uh, one database, a, a cluster of two or three database servers and one application server that was hosting uh, the mail server as well. We used to work like this. Um, of course, uh, there were security requirements back then, but the security controls and requirements was definite and steady. Um, also, as well as the security operations, we had uh, the classic waterfall model where the development uh, or the infrastructure teams was creating a new architecture, a new code deployment, and then the security teams I was uh, trying to make the security assessments and the audits and then decide if they will let or they will prevent uh, the new implementation of going live. Uh, so in general, things were simple, um, based basically on a waterfall model, as you know from software engineering. and. In general, the attack surface was very small. What is the attack surface? It's um, the surface of infrastructure and um, application uh, level, let's say, that is exposed and it's um, exposed to risk. So the exposition to risk with this architecture, it, was, it wasn't so much. So that was the past. Let's go to the present. Okay, after the latest decade, we have a new 
cloud and microservices, etc., with complex infrastructures, very complex architectures, containers, serverless, APIs, uh, software interdependencies. Um, uh, there is a hell of new um, components, architectures. So things now are much, much complex that it goes back. So there is a need, there was a need when this new era came up. Um, there was a need for, let's say, more and many colorful, I can say, security audits. To be more specific, um, with uh, cloud and microservices architectures, uh, forget about steady uh, security controls. You need uh, security controls is basically the security checks, what I have to check uh, to assess if a process or a software is secure enough to be live. Now we have uh, tailor-made for each architecture and each uh, company maybe security controls, which is ever changing. They changing maybe on every deployment. Uh, of course, the security operations uh, are now more much complex and time consuming, which means that uh, the security teams uh, lacking resources uh, to do the same quality and quantity of job that they were doing back with the original uh, architecture and infrastructures. The attack surface that we talked before, of course, is now wider and is rapid changing. I have seen uh, a system uh, creating uh, a new API every two months, for example. And of course, uh, after all, uh, we have a bit of communication challenges and conflict of interest between security development, the DevOps teams, um, the bad security guys uh, was uh, hunting down development and DevOps teams uh, saying that you have to, um, you have to satisfy this checklist to be compliant with the uh, XZ framework. And you have to also do pass those security checks and the development and DevOps teams uh, were always saying we have also to catch those deadlines. We have to be fast on our deployments. And you will see that security DevOps helps uh, to do a more effective communication between uh, those uh, departments. So the adoption of security DevOps uh, above, uh, based on the above, I will dare to say that improves the overall security posture. You have a higher security level. You have a more secure software, a more secure company. Uh, of course, it helps uh, with the communication thing and the process integration of uh, the development of software engineering. So it doesn't disrupt the production. Uh, it's more on an agile uh, tactic and it's more, it helps for in more effective delivery of software and services. It's more on the agile and not so much on the waterfall. Um, it's easier much easier to comply with frameworks and regulations because basically the philosophy is that you injecting uh, the security and compliance control inside the development a DevOps and infrastructure operation and services. You, so you don't have to do manual checks and manual audits all the time. Things are more automatically in that way. Uh, as we told before, uh, also improves the security culture in Dev and DevOps teams. It helps development of DevOps teams to become more security aware and more experts in security. Um, and that is a great contribution in, uh, in the overall company and overall security posture of the company. And 
also breaks the silo between that communication thing. We have better and more effective communication between the security and the DevOps or development teams. So we saw we had an introduction what security DevOps it is, how it helps uh, a company, uh, a technical uh, software house, how it helps to increase the security posture, better communication, uh, how can help an individual software engineer or DevOps engineer to be more security aware and deliver more secure results. Um, also, we realize the need, why we need, uh, after all, the security DevOps. And now we're going to see how we can implement this, uh, how we can uh, either, if you're a technical leader or if you're an individual contributor, how you can adopt uh, this technique, uh, this practice, in order to have the benefits we so above. So, first of all, we start with uh, the roles and the possibilities. Who is going to implement this? Well, if we talk about a small startup, then you need, um, let's say, security devil champion. Security devil champion is an individual. Uh, it can be a software developer or a devils um, that is. Uh, very curious that is uh, wants to learn about security or is already a security expert and um, also be assigned with uh, uh, security those security operations so we're looking for a security expert or somebody that uh, wants to learn about cyber security and he or she is the our champion to promote this um, security DevOps uh, matter, let's say. Now, on a middle-sized company, of course, you need a dedicated security DevOps specialist, usually from the DevOps team. Uh, now we're talking about uh, an expert, uh, both in DevOps and cybersecurity. And if, uh, in, if we are in a large organization, uh, we definitely need a dedicated security DevOps team to carry out all of this project. Uh, and now we'll talk about, we go straight to the implementation. We see a few implementation, a few pylons that are security DevOps project program will be based. The first one is the infrastructure as code. What is infrastructure as code? Um, as you all know, especially the DevOps and the infrastructure engineers, uh, we don't, uh, there is a tendency not to build infrastructure anymore by clicking and copy pasting of configuration files from our documentation repositories. We build uh, infrastructure, we're building services, databases, networks, VPNs, everything with code. The benefits of this uh, is that in that way we have code reviews also in infrastructure. Um, so let's say I will develop an infrastructure component. I have, and I'm an, on a DevOps infrastructure team. I have the other team members to do code reviews to my infrastructure the same way exactly as security engineers do. Uh, in that way also I can have security code artifacts that ensure security compliant architecture and standards. So um, there is not, uh, I, I, in that way you can have some standards, security standards uh, for your infrastructure uh, that is uh, hard code on your infrastructure as code. So in that way you're sure that you're following 
those standards and uh, there is not a, an infrastructure engineer that does something different, something less secure than the standards of the company or of the department. Um, except of that, you can have security controls injected in code, eliminating configuration errors and architectural security flows. Uh, configuration errors is a very, very heavy matter in cybersecurity. I mean, you can have a very, very secure environment and small configuration error can have a very, very high impact. So with infrastructure as code, you can eliminate very much uh, configuration errors and of course, um, be more compliant uh, and standard with your security architecture. Uh, last but not least, you can have very, very effective disaster recovery with infrastructure as code. Um, imagine that you, for some reason, you lose your entire infrastructure. Um, if everything is coded, top bottom, then you can uh, deploy your, your code, and uh, in a few, uh, in one hour, in a few hours, maybe you can have back your infrastructure, which is a fantastic rate for the information security standards in general. That was the first implementation and we will check some tools that you may all know. We have the cloud formation. Uh, this is the AWS uh, infrastructure as code tool. We have the Terraform. Terraform is, not, is more inter-platform um, tool. And we have also Ansible. Um, in my opinion, Ansible is uh, more suitable for post-provisioning, uh, for configuring uh, after the operating system and operating system and after. It's not so. It's very difficult and hard for developing developing cloud cloud infrastructures. Second pylon, second implementation is the secure pipeline. Now you all know, I suppose, the security. Um, the SDLC, uh, the pipeline, uh, we have a couple of things here. If we wish to inject security onto, in our pub, pipeline, we have the SAST, Static Application Security Testing, which is um, basically the SAST is when you scan your code um, for in vulnerable libraries, first of all, and secondly, for a uh, code errors in security, security bugs in source code. So you understand that in that way you can prevent a lot of uh, security bugs from, from being deployed. And then we have the dust, which is basically the dynamic security testing, which is you have your application deployed and live, and then you do a scanning and test about security bugs. Uh, you can have a picture uh, below. Uh, this is a very, very simple pipeline. Um, I'm not uh, a QA specialist here. You can put, so you can put the QA tests in every stage you can imagine. I just put it here for for reference, but the basic uh, thing is that you start with your source code analysis, then you build your project, then you deploy your project, and then after the project is deployed and live, then you do the dust, which is the dynamic security testing. I think here is that uh, please do not do dust, do not scan on uh, live environments, production environments, try to scan only in uh, development, staging environments. And um, another topic is that uh, the, dust, uh, the dust process uh, can, take, uh, can take very long sometimes. It can take days, maybe one week. So most of the times we do a lot of scoping in dust. We scope to the most critical areas and the areas that is 
are most changing and uh, we believe it will produce the more uh, security bugs. And let's go again to check a few tools about SAST and DAST. For SAST, we have SonarCube, Sneak, SendGrep, a CubeSec for Kubernetes deployments. For DAST, we have OWASP, ZAP, Acunetics, Qualys. Those are three tools that can be easily integrated into a security and a software pipeline, pipeline and attain, uh, attain the DAST. Third pylon, third implementation. Monitoring, logging, alerting, and incident response. Okay, this is already a DevOps and also a development matter. So if you're a software engineer, if you're an infrastructure engineer, there is nothing new about this. You all know about the logging and monitoring and alerting and how important it is, but a catch here that it's security DevOps uh, native, it's the automatic incident response. So in the, all those alerts, you can have uh, automatic uh, actions. So the classic incident response is that we are on call, we are on duty and we see an alert and we wake up at night and we are trying to respond to the incident. Uh, with this technique, and we'll see some tools later that uh, they can do this, uh, you can uh, have a specific response, a specific mechanism triggered by a specific alert. For example, let's say if I have a, if I, if I have a very high number of uh, errors, error rate in my, on my web uh, application, uh, ban this IP address that created the error rate for 12 hours. Uh, or if uh, I have a very, um, I have an SQL injection query, ban again the IP, or you can do, sky is the limit for this. But the clue is that you can have an alert and you can, with this alert, trigger an action so you don't have to do the incident response manually. As I told you, you have some tools about this. Okay, you have some very basic and uh, traditional tools uh, for logging uh, and alerting, ELK, OpenSearch, Splunk. And I have recently saw a presentation about how Splunk can be used as a CM. Uh, as an incident response uh, management tool. We have Grafana Promission, of course, and we have AWS CloudWatch. I'm sorry, but I'm more specialized in AWS Cloud, so that's why I mentioned more the AWS uh, tools. So CloudWatch uh, has this capability in a very large extent where you can uh, catch events cloud events and uh, trigger uh, the appropriate alerts, uh, sorry, actions from the events. Last but not least, implementation, last pylon to steer our security DevOps program is the audits and assessments. Um, basically, you can do um, some scanning around your applications, around your cloud infrastructures, around your on-premises infrastructure as well. Um, web application scans, uh, scanning directly your web applications in the HTTP ports. Uh, you can scan your networks, all your networks, every port, either it's uh, cloud or its on-premise infrastructure. Uh, there are some specialized uh, cloud security and audit uh, tools that you can use as well for this. And of course, uh, because um, uh, the cell, because the philosophy of security DevOps is uh, DevOps, which is automation, 
I will strongly suggest to automate this and have a scheduling um, regarding your security scans. And a few tools about this is a uh, few of them, we check them also on the dust, on the dynamic application security testing, is the OWASP SAP, is the Nessus, uh, is the Burp Suite. Uh, Burp Suite is also a fantastic tool that can give you, you can, cre you can create proof of concept uh, cases uh, for, for application bugs like C RSF, SQL injections, cross-site scriptings, NMAP. NMAP is a traditional, very strong uh, network scanner. You can use Ansible ad hoc commands. This is, you know, most of us, we know Ansible as an infrastructure, as code, and as an automation and configuration management tool. Uh, but uh, Ansible provides the ad hoc commands uh, which you basically can run commands, Linux commands or Ansible commands across your entire server infrastructure. So it's a great way to audit uh, operating system and server things. And of course we have AWS Config and AWS Trusted Advisor, those great tools for helping to audit the compliance and assess the security of your cloud infrastructure. And that was it. Thank you very much. And uh, please proceed to any questions you may have. I'm very glad to answer to any questions. So that means, I don't know. Okay, thank you very much as well. Thank you for having me and hope we can have an, another session next year. <laughs>